Uh, good morning, everyone. So welcome to the second day of this week. Uh, so yesterday we learned about acquisition of vocabulary. So Gedin Sagela and I have discussed a few strategies uh, in how to, you can say, strategies that can help you acquire vocabulary, right, in expanding your vocabulary. So today also we, will, we would be dealing with something that is related to vocabulary. So it is understanding word relationship and understanding words. See, in my session, I would be discussing uh, understanding of, or, or you can say understanding words, and Kedin Sagila will discuss on understanding word relationship. All right. So uh, we have been talking, right, right from the very beginning, this online classes began in June, right? And we started talking about verb forms, right? And then we talked about, uh, you can say sentence, sentence types, and then how sentences can be grouped into a paragraph. So how we can develop a paragraph using different types of sentences. We talked about uh, how paragraphs, how number of paragraphs help in making, uh, making an essay, right? We also talked about different writing types, text structure, so many things, right? So this week we are focusing on vocabulary because I told you whether you are writing a sentence, whether you are writing a paragraph, you need to have a good vocabulary, a rich vocabulary that would help uh, express your ideas more conveniently, right? You feel something, but when you run short of words, it becomes difficult, right? So having a rich vocabulary is very important. At the same time, having an understanding of words is also very important, right? And how words, uh, you can say, how different words are related in different ways. Right, so these are all very important. So I would be discussing more on understanding words, what actually a word is. You know, words are formed of letters, isn't it, right? Letters are grouped together to form words, and vo words are grouped together to form phrases, clauses, or sentences, right? So what we will do today is we will try to Kind of, see, if you already know about all this, it would be kind of review, right? A recapitulation of what, all, what you already know. Or in, if you have, you can say, uh, not that much uh, knowledge about or understanding about all this, I think that would be, you can say, helpful, right? So uh, I think all the students would be benefited if you understand, if you develop an understanding about words and then word relationship, which Gitin Sargila will discuss in his next session, right? So let's look at the slide. Okay, understanding words. See, words can be either content or structural. See, you broadly classify, right, word as content word or structural word. Like yesterday, we talked about active vocabulary and passive vocabulary, right? So words can be either content word or structural word. So if you just look at the, you can say word is a structural, it shows that it kind of, they are the kind of words that help in the formation of structure, the building of the uh, structure, right? So, and the uh, other one is content word. So, let's look at what content words are. Words that have specific meaning, right? So, these are the words which you are introduced uh, at the very beginning, like uh, name of things, and there are a lot of other things that you use, right? So, uh, it has a meaning. The word itself has a, you can say, a specific meaning. Have at least three letters. So that is very important. You need to understand that if it's a content word, the, you can say, requirement is that it needs to have three letters. Okay. And content words are generally stressed. They are higher in pitch. Okay. And content words include nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Uh, see, if, if, okay. 
So, if uh, like we have this word, um, okay. okay, in, right. So, this is a word, but this is not a content word, okay, in. This is a structural word. This is uh, used in, you can say, forming the structure of a sentence. This more, you can say, a uh, structural word, not a content word. See, and I told you, a content word has to have minimum three letters, okay? So, you know, in, okay? This is a noun, right? In, three word, sorry, three letter, okay? Three letter word. So, one uh, way you can identify content uh, le word and structural word is by looking at the number of letters, okay? So, content word has, you can say, minimum three letters, okay? So, you have another example of, okay, egg. So, why do you think this extra G, okay? Egg is a noun, isn't it? Okay, it's a content word. So, E double G is used, okay? And so, there are a lot of other, uh, you can say, words where you can understand this, uh, you can say, uh, the difference between content and structural word, right? Okay, so I told you content words include noun, verb, adjective, adverbs, okay? So, the other preposition and other, you can say, uh, forms of verbs, uh, sorry, words are usually structural words, okay? Look at the slide. So, content words include nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, okay? So, structural words are also called function words because they help in the functioning, okay? Are words that are used for forming the structure of a sentence, like I, like I told you, right? How the sentence structure is formed is by using structural words. See, if I just name all the nouns and all the adjectives together, that doesn't convey, a, you can say, a meaning doesn't form a structure, okay? If I say, okay, egg, banana, fruit, apple, table, okay, so it's not going to make any sense, any sentence. So, in order to make a sentence, we need to use both content word as well as structure, stru uh, structural word or function words, okay? So, st structural or function words have little meaning of their own, okay? Unlike content word, say content word, words have a specific meaning. If I say table, you mean table, right? You, you can understand, you can easily think, oh, this is a table, okay, this is a pen, okay? But if I just say is, okay, so right now I'm saying this is a pen, okay? This is a pen. So if I say pen, which is a content word, it has meaning, right? Pen means it suggests something, right? But if I say is, Okay, it doesn't, it, it doesn't have, a, you can say, a meaning, right? Is, right? So, you can say content word have, words have a specific meaning, whereas structural and function word, okay, do, you can say do not have a specific meaning. They only help in the, uh, you can say, formation of sentence, the functioning of the content words, and they're used in the, you can say, sentence structure, okay? are generally unstressed, lower in pitch, and sometimes reduced, okay? Uh, like I told you, how you can, in a way, identify. See, if you are to read a sentence, okay, you have stressed and unstressed words, okay? So, how you can identify is, usually, the content words are stressed, whereas function words or structural words are unstressed. Okay, if I say, um, I, have, I have a pen, see, I, okay, I, I have a pen, pen I'm stressing, okay, I want to go to Japan, okay, I, okay, want to go to, so, uh, Japan is stressed, usually you will see when you read a sentence, you just try to do that, okay, you try to practice this. When you read something, when you read a story, or when you read a paragraph, when you read a sentence, what do you find? You stress on the content words, okay? Uh, the structural words or the function words are usually unstressed. They have a lower pitch, okay? And sometimes they are reduced, right? So that is one difference you need to understand. 
Words can be content word or function word. Content words have specific meaning, whereas function words do not have a specific meaning or they have little meaning, right? And content words are usually stressed when you read, okay? Structure, structural word or function word, they are unstressed or sometimes maybe reduced, okay? So what structural or function words do? They bind together other words to make phrases, clauses, and sentences. That's why they are called structural words or function words. For example, you have pronouns, prepositions, models, and auxiliary verbs. You have the helping verbs. These are all examples of function words, conjunctions, relatives, and some structural adjectives and adverbs. This, that, okay, it. So you have um, different, you can say, and then uh, structural adverbs. Not all adverbs are, uh, you can say, function words because some adverbs are content. Okay, content words, the structural adjectives, and that means the adjectives and adverbs that help in the formation of structure of a sentence. Okay, so they are, you can say, included in function words. So words can be, you can say, uh, like I told you, content and structure word. And then we can have another way of identifying words. Okay, words that can be broken down into smaller units. Okay, there are words that can be broken down into smaller units. We can break the word so that we get different units. Okay, and we have words that cannot be broken down into smaller units. Okay, if I say pen, I cannot break this word pen to get two more units. Okay, smaller units. The smallest linguistic unit we call morpheme, right? So we cannot, we, there are certain, some words which we cannot break down into smaller units and there are some words which we can break down so that we get other smaller units, okay? Uh, if I, okay, let, let me first go through this, right? Words can be divided into syllables in order to read the words, okay? So when you read a word, okay, you know, you break the words into syllables, syllables, right? If you remember during our uh, lessons on poetry reading and writing, so we talked about rhythm, right? How they are created, how rhythm is created, uh, stressed and unstressed syllable, right? And how we break the words, okay? How we uh, break the words into syllables, counting syllables and all. So words can be divided into syllables, Okay, in order to read the word. So when we are to read a word, say suppose like I said pen, okay, pen, just one syllable, isn't it? But if I say pencil, pencil, so pencil is a single word, right? But we can break it into syllables so that it becomes easier for us to read. Pencil, isn't it? Pencil, if I say pencil, box, pencil, two syllabic word, box, one syllable. But if we add the suffix es after that pencil boxes okay because i have added b o x e s pencil boxes boxes two syllable atmosphere three syllable right atmosphere so atmosphere is one word but i have broken the, uh, the word into three syllables right atmosphere atmosphere And what you need to understand or remember is, like I told you, words can be divided into syllables in order to read the words. Because if we break the words into syllables, it becomes easier for us to read. Okay. And syllables can be open or closed. Okay. Closed, open. Like I, if I said, uh, I use the example pen. Pen is a closed, example of a closed syllable because the what you need to remember is, as you can say, there's always a vowel sound, okay, in a syllable, right? And if I say pen, this is closed because the vowel sound you have is closed by a consonant, n, n, okay, pen. So what you need to remember is, okay, I'm just repeating, words can be content word or structural word, right? And we have to, or we can break the 
word into syllables so that it becomes easier for us to read. And syllables can be open or closed. Okay. So what you need to remember, I told you, a syllable always contains a vowel. So that makes it very easy for you in order to break because what you need to look for in a word is you need to see if there's a vowel or not. Okay. So you, uh, you need to break the word in this manner, right? Keeping that there is a vowel. Okay. In a syllable, you, a syllable always contains a vowel. So you all know, right? Since you are in grade 5 to 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? You all know what are the vowels, okay? A, E, I, O, U, okay? These are the five vowels. And rest of the English alphabet, okay, are all consonant, right? You have 26 letters of the alphabet, isn't it? So these five are vowels and rest are consonants, okay? So we will talk about what uh, an open syllable is and what a closed syllable is. So open syllables end with a vowel. So like I told you, pen is a closed syllable because it does not end with a vowel. Pen, P-E-N, mm, mm sound. So it's not a vowel. Okay, so what you need to remember is open syllables means ends with a vowel, right? Closed syllables end with consonant. Will that make it easier for you to understand? So open syllables end with a vowel. Often has long vowel sound. Okay. You have short vowel sound, long vowel sound. So open syllables usually have long vowel sound. Okay. For example, see I. Okay. I itself is a word, isn't it? I, right? And it's a vowel sound. And this is a this is an example of open syllable because the word starts as well as ends in I, right, I. And you can see this is a long vowel sound, isn't it? I. We don't say I, okay, I. I, I, we say I, isn't it? Okay, so long vowel sound. And then you have me, me, okay. See, the vowel sound here is E, right, me. Can you, in a way, are you able to identify me? It's a long vowel sound or a short vowel sound? Me, do, right? Again, you see, ends with vowel, right? Do, we, no, he, she. Okay, so these are examples of, so we have more. So all the uh, examples in the first line, they are one syllabic word, right? One syllable. All the words have just one syllable. Okay, one syllable and they are open syllables because they all end with a vowel. And you can see they have long vowel sound, isn't it? Okay, next. Writer. See, look at the highlighted part, okay? W-R-I, I have highlighted in green. Timer, table, paper, right? The words that are highlighted. So, the second example is two syllabic words, right? Two syllable, all you have, you can see. So, how we can break is, we can look at, okay, uh, you can see after the vowel sound, you have one consonant, isn't it? You break it there, right? Writer, two syllable, ri. The first part, or you can say, see this word, writer, is a two syllabic word, right? And you can break it into two, right? When you break this writer, right? So the first part, the first syllable is, you can say an example of open syllable. Whereas the second one is an example of closed syllable because it, in a way, ends with a consonant, T-E-R, ter, right? So if you can just look at the board. So I have a few examples like, um, right, see. So if we have to break this into two, uh, you can say syllable when we read this. So how do we break, right? Ter, right, right, ter. And what do you find here? This is the vowel sound here, vowel. So this part, the first syllable is an example of open syllable. Okay, and the second one is closed. See how I told you each syllable has a vowel. So you see, there's a vowel, there's a vowel here. Ter, uh, okay. Writer, you have paper. 
paper. How do you break this? Again, see, paper. Okay, so this is an example of open syllable. Pa paper. Paper. So here, what do you find? Short vowel sound. Here, long vowel sound. Paper. Paper. Two syllable word. And this one is open syllable. Pa ends with vowel. Okay, paper. Table. Writer. Okay, fighter. Okay, so let's look at the slide now. Writer, timer, timer, table, paper. Okay, so these are examples of open syllables. So we have, I have, uh, you can say, in a way, kind of gathered uh, examples of one syllabic word and two syllabic words. I think now it's clear, right? Open syllable. Okay. Okay, now let's look at closed syllables, okay? So now that you have an idea about what, uh, what an open syllable may look like, now let's look at closed syllables, I told you earlier, and with a consonant, okay? Unlike open syllables, closed syllables and with a consonant. Often has short vowel sound, unlike open syllable, okay? They have short vowel sound. Examples? Pen, I told you, yes, did, miss, see, we don't say pen, do we say, yes, okay, pen, yes, we don't say did, okay, did, okay, pen, yes, did, miss, okay, one syllabic word, okay, closed syllables, look at, okay, two syllabic words, okay, pencil, pen, sil, so the highlighted letters are all vowels, okay, Pencil, tablet, tablet, you use tablet, right? Magnet. So these are, see, magnet, net, right? Magnet, you break this, okay? Two syllable word, tab tablet, pencil, okay? So these are all examples of closed syllables. That, then, see, I told you earlier, content word, structural words, okay? And then you have, uh, you learned about how words can be broken down into syllables, okay, and types of syllables, right? Uh, closed syllables and open syllables, and how you can identify a closed syllable from an open syllable, okay, and how you have to read the word depending on whether it's open syllable or closed syllable, right? And now we will look at types of words, okay, word types. So, word can be like we have sentence, if you remember sentence types, simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence, compound complex sentence, if you remember, right? So, words can be simple, compound, and complex, okay? Simple words are words that cannot be broken down into smaller meaningful units. Okay, I told you we can group words into like if you group words into two broader categories, it would be words that can be broken down into simpler or smaller units or that cannot be broken down into smaller units. So simple words are those words that cannot be broken down into smaller meaningful units. Okay, I mean to say meaningful units means the units in which you have broken the words needs to have meaning, right? For example, hot, cake, pen. See, we cannot break the word hot into two meaningful unit, right? Cake, we cannot break into meaningful units. Pen, we cannot break into meaningful units. Okay, so these are all examples of simple words. Help, fire, okay? So you can think of more words, okay, that you can consider, okay, simple words. They are simple words because they cannot be broken down into or uh, you can say smaller meaningful units. Okay, these are all examples of simple words. Then we have compound words. Okay, words formed by combining two or more words giving a new meaning. So you can combine two different words and you get a new word. Okay, uh, which means something else. Okay, it gets, uh, you create a new meaning. Okay, example, see butterfly. You all know butterfly, right? So butterfly is formed by two words, butter plus fly, isn't it? Butter is another word, right? Fly is a different word. But when you combine these two, you get a different word, isn't it? 
butterfly butterfly so butterfly is a compound word okay then you have starfish okay starfish formed by star plus fish see star and fish are two different things isn't it two different identities and when we combine these two we get a new word starfish and it means something else isn't it then you have eggplant okay eggplant is formed by the word egg plus plant egg means something else right plant is something else and when we combine these two words what do we get a vegetable eggplant okay another name for brinjal right you all know brinjal so eggplant is other name for brinjal right so these are examples of compound words think of other compound words okay on your own you think of oh this is also compound word this is also compound word okay complex words so words made by or containing multiple units okay like i told you morphemes means the you can say smallest linguistic unit of a word okay or you can say the grammatical unit of a word so complex words are formed by say unlike compound word which is formed by combining two different words complex words are formed by units okay they can have multiple units right example see uncomfortable uncomfortable okay listen to me uncomfortable i said so what do you find here you have a prefix you have a base word and you have a suffix right uncomfortable un is not a word okay but it's a prefix right see un plus comfort plus able so i have broken this into smaller units isn't it un plus comfort plus able but when we read it together look at the pronunciation okay listen to me we don't say uncomfortable okay if we say uncomfortable we are pronouncing this word wrong okay here when you pronounce this whole word okay we have to in a way say you have to reduce the word o r t here uncomfortable uncomfortable comf uncomfortable uncomfortable not uncomfortable okay uncomfortable so this is an example of a complex word so how this is you can say how we have broken this word into units let's see see un is the prefix comfort is the base word okay comfort is the base word and you have the able as suffix so a prefix a suffix and a base word together combined to form this complex word so you think of other examples of complex words okay uh, and then try to identify whether see you think of as many words okay this is what i want you to do right think of as many words as you can and then try to group the words whether the word is a simple word a compound word or a complex word and i told you a simple word is you can say the word that cannot be broken down into smaller units right smaller morphemes or other words compound words are formed by combining two different words okay and complex words we can break into or you can say words are formed by combining smaller units okay or morphemes the linguistic unit right it can have multiple units can have two or more units it's clear now good see now again see we can group word as base word and root word okay so you might have heard a lot okay from gedin sargela and me using gela has also talked about a lot of root word okay and base word yesterday when i was uh, telling you about prefixes and suffixes i told you about when a prefix is added to a base word we get this when a prefix is added to a base word a suffix is added to a base word so what actually is a base word right so word can be base word root word okay so base word and root word can be sometimes confusing okay and some people even use stem word okay so the whole idea is what you need to remember is okay 
This is the word from where you can build more word. Okay, you can say expand the word by adding prefixes and suffixes. So let's look at just uh, the difference here. Base word can stand alone. Okay, see root word may not stand alone. Okay, so you need to uh, remember this in order to differentiate base word from root word. Okay, so base word can stand alone. Okay, and the base word is word form to which affixes can be added. So, if you just look at the board, if you remember yesterday I took this example, act, right? So, act is the base word, okay, because we can add suffix or prefix, okay? So, if I add a suffix, iv, active, Okay, we can act, add more suffix actively like this, right? So, act is a base word. Now, act can also be considered a root word, okay? But if I have, see, if I add I, V, E on active, okay, now, in active, this can be the base word on which I have added the suffix I, V, E. Am I making sense? Is it clear? On act, if I add I, V, E, okay, this is my base word. Okay? It may be a root word, a root word that originated from Greek or Latin. Okay? It may be that. See, act, active. Okay. Now, in a very simple way, I'm going to... Uh, explain the difference between root word and base word, right? So, if this is the word active, act is the root or the base, okay? Now, on active, if I'm going to add another suffix, that is L, Y, actively. Now, there's a new word, isn't it? Now, active is the base word, okay? The base word is active on which I am adding this suffix ly, but active is not the root word. Is it clear? Active is not the root word, it's a base word here or you can say the stem here because I am adding more suffix to that, but the root word is still act, okay? Is it clear? The root word is act, okay? But if the word is active only if you don't have this suffix ly, okay? So, act can, act, you can say act, the word act can act as a root or base word, right? But if the word is actively, active may be the base word on which we have added the suffix ly, but active is not the root word, okay? The root word is act. Is it clear? Okay, now look at the slide. Oh. Okay. So, base word can stand alone. Okay. So, word form to which affixes can be added, they are called base word. So, root word cannot often stand alone, right? Most of the time, see, when root word is something that is from another, you can say, language like Greek or Latin word. So, they don't stand alone. They are usually, you can say, either a kind of suffix or prefix or, okay, so other words. So, sometimes it may, but usually they don't, or you can say, cannot often stand alone. So, part of a base word, okay, so from another language. So, root words are usually, you can say, uh, they are part of word that is taken from other, you can say, yesterday I remember Gedin Stargela in, in one of his sessions, he talked about bio, right? Bio is an example of a root word, okay? I think it's a Greek word, right? Bio, that means life, okay? But then you have biology, biography, uh, you can say biopic, biometric. A lot of words can be kind of, you can say add, uh, uh, suffixes or can be added, right? Bio itself is a root word, okay? Clear? Okay, let's look at some examples. So, I think this is clear, right? Word can be base word, root word, see. And then if you want to, you can say, clarify more about this, you can then Google, you can search or browse different websites to see the difference, okay? Base word, stem word, root word, there are a lot of things. So, 
it will be, I think, more clear. So I try to give a very simple example to help you understand the difference between root and base word, right? Because this can be sometimes confusing. Okay. So root word. So word or part of a word from which other words grow by adding affixes. So this is a part of word. Okay, root word can be a part of word or it can be a word itself from which other words grow. So we can add affixes, means either prefix or suffixes. Examples of Greek root words, like I told you, it can be like original Greek or Latin. Okay, so you have a lot of, you can say, uh, words in English, which is, you can say, a Greek or Latin. Okay, like tele. Yesterday, I think, for when we were talking about prefixes, I think I just told you about telephone, right? Telecommunication, so tele as a prefix. So tele is a Greek word, which means distant or far. So tele is a root word, okay? It is a prefix as well, okay? Tele is a prefix, it is a root word, and then you can develop by adding some more letters to this, right? For example, telephone, television, telescope, telepathy, telegram, telegraph, see. So these are, you can say the tele itself is, you can say not an English word, but not an English word, the word originated from, you can say Greek word, Greek. So telephone, television, telescope. So this is a, an example of root word. So understanding of root word is very important in order to expand or uh, enrich your vocabulary. If you are aware of the root word tele, so it becomes very easy. You can easily kind of puzzle out or decode the meaning whenever you happen to see this word tele attached to some other word, okay? Telephone, you can understand, okay, distant, far. Television, vision, right? Telescope, that is used to observe far away objects, isn't it? Then you have another word, anti. Anti means against. You have anti-nation, nation, right? Antibodies. You have antibacterial, antivirus, okay, see, antivirus is something that works against virus, right? Antibacterial, antiseptic you have, right? Detol, antiseptic, Sevlon as an antiseptic. Then you have antibodies, okay, in our body you have antibodies, okay? You have like white blood cells which creates, produces antibodies to fight against foreign, you can say the germs that enter our body, right? Antibodies, antis, against. Antibody means that there are, you can say something, uh, uh, you can say a part of our body inside you can say you have, which fights against foreign bodies, that is the germs, okay, the diseases in a way. So anti, against. Then you have geo. So you all know the term geo, right? You have the subject geography, okay? Geo means earth, okay? So if you know the meaning of this root word geo, Okay, you know geo means something related to earth. Geo means earth. So you can think of as many words. So you can easily puzzle out the meaning, decode the meaning of the word in which you find the geo attached, the prefix geo attached, which, which itself is a root word, right? Geo. Geology, geography, you have geo hazards, isn't it? Geometry, okay? Then you have auto, okay, auto. You have automatic machine, semi-automatic, right? Okay, automobiles, okay. So auto meaning self. So in science, you have learned about, I think class seven students might remember, you learned about autotrophs, heterotrophs, isn't it? Autotrophs, the green plants who, who, that produces their own food, isn't it? Auto, self, okay. Automatic, okay. The root word is auto, and then on this we have attached this matic, right? Autograph, autotroph, like I told you, autobiography, autograph, okay, autobiography. So think of automobiles, okay? And then you have ATM, right? Automatic uh, teller machine. So these are all you can say, you can, few, not all, <laughs> there are still more examples of Greek root words. You can Google, you can find out, you can, okay? So I cannot be discussing all the root words, but just to get you an idea about, okay, these are examples of Greek root words, right? You search, you browse for more root words. Hmm? And then we have, see, root word, I told you, a part of word from which other words grow by adding affixes. Just the repetition here. Latin root words, okay? The earlier one, the previous slides contain, slide contains 
Latin Greek words. So here I have, uh, I'm going to give you examples of Latin root words, okay. Pot means carry. Yesterday I remember I talked about uh, transport, right. Transport, export, import. You all know, right. India exports this, this, this things to other country, okay. India imports such goods from other country, import, export, okay, then transport across. So if you just uh, look here, uh, okay, pot is the Latin word, right, pot is the Latin word. So if we add the prefix trans on this, what do we get? Transport, right? Is the green color visible? I think I should use black color, okay? I think it's more clear, I think. Let me use the black pen. Pot is the root word, right? And from this, if we add, okay, the prefix trans here, okay, we get transport. So, pot is the root word, trans is the prefix, pot is the root, okay, root word. So, pot, this is root word, right, transport, now we can add more suffix to this, okay, trans, I'm adding this, transportation, okay. So, what do you notice? Transport, a kind of verb, right? Transport, a transport. Transportation, again see, root, port is the root, this is prefix. I have added this, okay. Suffix, okay. And what do we get? A noun. Transportation. Okay, so you can think of words in this way also. If you have the idea that pot means carry, okay, transport means carrying across, transport. You carry across. And depending on that, you have import and export. Okay, X, im. Okay, import, export. Okay, then transportation becomes the noun, right? So this is how uh, you can think of like root word and then adding prefixes and suffixes then changes the meaning or the form. Okay, get this side. Transport, and we have mit, M-I-T, mit. Okay, it's a root word. See, root words, I told you, they cannot often stand alone, right? Mit, though it means send, so mit is not a, you can say, standalone word. Okay, it cannot stand alone. Okay, unlike base word. Base word can stand alone. Okay, so mit you have, which means sent, transmit, permit. Okay, so on the root word mit, the prefix trans is added, transmit. On the root word mit, permit, transmit, permit. Okay, you can think of more words. Okay, then you have vac, okay, meaning empty. Okay, so you have vacuum, vacuum cleaner, you have vacuum. Vacuum is, uh, you can say, if you, if you say this room is vacuum, if this is empty without anything, not even air, okay, vacuum, not even air. Okay, we cannot say that there are not, no, not a single thing in this room, but if there's air, this room is not vacuum, okay. Vacuum means even air should not be there, it should be totally empty. Right, vacate, to remove the things, okay, to vacate the house means you are emptying, okay, evacuate, kind of similar, right, so pot, mate, vac, so these are all Latin root words, okay, and you have like, uh, I remember in science we have veca, which means cow in Greek, from the word veca you have vaccine, okay, vaccination, vaccine came from the Greek word veca, which means cow, because the first time the vaccination was, you can, the vaccine was developed uh, when the, you can say the people were having 
problem with cowpox. Okay, so there's a kind of scientific story after that. Okay, so I'll not discuss that. Okay, so this is the end of uh, my session. So I think you had an kind of an idea about okay, words. Okay, understanding words. So how words can be broken into syllables. Uh, word types you are aware of, isn't it? Words you can identify based on whether it's a content word or function word, okay? And you also learned about, okay, base word and root word, right? And now onwards, I hope you will try to read words by breaking into syllable. And always remember a syllable consists of a vowel sound, right? Thank you.